Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well. I hope you are staying safe in this COVID period. And I especially hope that you are learning from these sessions. I'm your host, Oren Thomas, and welcome to another Applied Music Theory tutorial session. Today, we'll be looking at a special kind of topics. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at time signatures and a basic understanding of time signatures is integral to a complete understanding of today's topic. Now, have you ever looked at a hymn and seen a set of quavers and they're grouped like this? They're grouped in two. Now, you may look at another hymn, you may look at another hymn, and you see a set of quavers grouped like this and i don't know if if some of you are inquisitive you may ask what does that mean does does it have any specific meaning because there are quavers you know don't get don't get it twisted this is not anything different it's not a semi quaver or a minimum or anything like that it is this is a quaver two quavers and this is quavers so they're both quavers but they're grouped differently what does that mean how do we read it? How do we understand it? Why does it even happen? At the end of today's class, you will have answers to all of these questions and more. All right. So our trivia for today is going to our trivia for today. It's going to be very simple. It's going to be based on last class. So I'm going to give you three musical terms and you are going to tell me the meaning. You're going to type quickly in the chat box the meaning of the musical terms so your first one and these should be very easy for you by now first one is piano the second is lento the next is allegro type quickly the meaning of these terms i'm going to give you five seconds for each so that's 15 seconds Time is up. Piano is soft. Lento is very slow. And Allegro is quick or fast. Congratulations to all our lucky winners out there. Um, your prize is to be announced. All right, so that is the trivia for today. Let us get right into today's class with a word of prayer. Dear kind, gracious Father, we thank you so much for this another day. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for giving us strength, for giving us health. And we thank you most of all, Lord, for music this wonderful gift of expressing ourselves, expressing sadness, expressing joy, expressing love towards you and towards our fellow man. 
We ask that you will be with us in this session now. We ask that you will guide this class session. Be with the, the listeners and the viewers. Please open their minds to understand the concepts that will be taught today and help them to apply these concepts so that they can have a deeper understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So today we're looking, as I said before, at beat divisions, dotted notes, and rest. We're not going to be spending so much time on rest because some of the concepts you would know already, some of the things you would know from semi breed minimum, you'll see when we get there. So beat divisions. We're talking about beat divisions right now. All right. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using two popular hymns and showing you how beats can be divided in two ways. There are two ways you can divide beats, all right? So let's look at this first one up top here. We're going to look at Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. If they have it on the screen, they can show it there. If, if, if you can see it here, then that's fine. So we're looking at Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Now if you look, if you, and you should know the song, so it goes, I'll play it. Let me play it. It goes, guide me, oh. Ah, there we go. There we have it. Guide. I'm not going to play exactly as it's written. I just want to emphasize one main part there. The great J. So you have. Guide me, oh, thou great J. You see that there? You see those quavers? Great J. So essentially what you're doing right there is that you're singing two notes on great, great, and then you're singing two notes on J, J. So that right there is what we would call, that grouping is what we would call a simple, is what we would call a simple beat division. Simple beat division. A simple beat division. Now let's take a look at Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. If you look in the hymn now, you'll see it goes. So you see that set of three quavers right at the start? Blessed A. Blessed A. You see in three quavers. And then Jesus is. You see three quavers again. Blessed are Jesus is. That beat division is what we call a compound. A compound beat division. Blessed are. So it's divided in three. So how do we know the difference between the two? Simple beat division. The beat is divided in two. A compound beat division, the beat is divided in three. Now, we're going to be looking at different hymns and explaining this further on. But before we look at the hymns, before you get the, the practical application, we're just going to do up a quick little table here that explains everything that we're saying now. That explains everything that we're saying. Then I'm going to give examples. And then by the end of the class, by the end of... In a couple minutes, you'll understand what I mean. So just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Now, the first question you may ask. First, why am I putting this here? The first question you may be tempted to ask is, all right, why is this important? How is this important? How am I going to use this? Why do I need to know this? Why do I need to know about beat divisions and dotted notes? The simple reason is that it expands your musical vocabulary. The more you know, the more you'll be able to identify, the more you'll be able to see, oh, that's what this is. And he'll say, okay, I understand now. So it's, it is something that Many people, I would say, do not really understand that in depth. But as soon as you see it, then you'll get it. And, and then it will be very simple. All right? So beat divisions. You have, remember we said you have simple and you have compound. So a beat can be divided in two ways. Simple and compound. So we're going to do up a table. We're going to put simple here. And then, boop. And then we're going to put, and you can draw this table as well. 
it, it will help you a lot. Compound. All right. So now we're going to look at some more elements that we call. Remember, remember when we looked at time signature? We looked at some time signatures that were 4, 4, and 3, 4. I don't know if you remember that. If you don't remember that, you can just go back to the time signature class and look back at it. Now, the time signature, what we said for a time signature, the top number signifies the amount of beats per bar. The top number signifies the amount of beats per bar. Now, time signatures can be divided into simple and compound, and they can also be divided in another category. They can be divided into what we call two, three, and four. At the first class, I said you really have two times, which is two and three. So four is really two but two times. It's just that you're saying one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four. So it's really two and three. There are only two times, march and waltz. But for beat divisions, we categorize it a little differently. So for songs that have two beats per bar, what we call it is a duple meter. You call it a duple meter. All right? And then for songs that have three beats per bar, what do you think we would call it? What do you think we would call it? We have duple, then what? What sound like p, but start with three? Sh triple, all right? So triple. So for songs that have three beats per bar, like praise to the Lord, two, three. One, two, three. That song is in three, four. We'd call it a triple meter. And then for songs that are in four, which is the most common time signature. Remember, we said that four, four is the most common time signature. We call it a what? quadruple quadruple all right so let's see this now so if we have a simple duple a simple duple time signature would look like how much how much is duple two two beats per bar so you'd have two four and the beat would be divided like this remember simple is you have the beat divided in two let me, let me draw it right here so you can see. So simple beat divided in two. Beat divided in two. Compound beat divided in three. We'll soon get to the compound time signatures and how they work. So just, just, bear, in, just bear in mind, we're going to fill out this whole table and then you'll see how they work. All right? So a triple time signature would be something like three, four, or three. Remember, so for these duple, triple, quadruple it only applies to the top number remember we said the bottom number and your, your understanding of time signatures will come into play here the bottom number signifies the bottom number tells you which beat which type of beat signifies one beat so this would mean three quarter notes per bar this would mean three eight notes per bar it's still a triple meter all right so, and this would be the same a quadruple meter would be something like 4-4, four, four, or 4-8, four, or 4-16, or 4-2, whatever. And the same can apply. 3-2, 3-16, what do I not have here? 2-8, two, 2-16, two, 2-2. Two, two. All right? So time signatures such as 2-4, duple meter. Time signatures such as 2-8, duple meter. Once the top number is a 2, it is a duple meter because there are 2 beats per bar. Once the top number is a 3, it is a triple meter because you have 3 beats per bar. 3 crotchets, 3 quavers, 3 minims, 3 semiquavers. That's what that means. Alright? And then once the top number is a 4, it is a quadruple meter. You seeing how it works now? So that is simple meter. Now let us count how a simple... Let us do an exercise, and this will show you how a simple meter would sound. We're going to do a simple duple meter first. Simple duple. You'd go one and two and one and two and. So the beat is divided in two. Let me use a metronome so you can hear. I want to use the same tempo.
no that is four this is four let me change it from four to two so the strong beat is the Oh, that's beat one. One, two, one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and that's how you divide a simple duple meter. So you'd have one and two and one and two and three would simply be one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and two and one and two. So this this is an exercise to kind of help you get it going. One and two and quadruple. You just count to four and you divide the beat in two just like how you did it for duple and triple so you go one and two and three and four and one and two and three let me use the metronome let's slow it down a bit so that you can really understand slow it down a little bit more so you can hear the division so this is the tempo let me do duple one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and this 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 these are the conducting patterns so one two one two one two three would be one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three quadruple oh, i didn't change this <laughs> i wonder why it would Quadruple would be one and two and three and four and one and two and and so so if you were to count the quavers you'd count eight quavers for that one and two and three sorry i'm not counting the quavers one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight all right so that's our quadruple simple quadruple would be counted now for compound it's a bit different so compound time signatures this is how they work now the beat is divided in three but we, we use the top number as six all right so we're going to say the top number is six anytime you see a top number as six it means that it is a compound duple meter so why why do we say six why do we say six or in why do we say six because when you divide six into three is that correct did i say it properly yes when you divide six into three you get two so let me show you how it would look you go one two three four five six So essentially, essentially what is happening is that you're taking two beats and you're dividing it into three. So what you end up getting? One, two, three, four, five, six. See that? One, two, three, four, five, six. What is two beats, you know? One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four four five six one two four all right so you see how we get six now see that we divide the beat into three so by the time you add up one two three let me let me do essentially what you're seeing is one two three then two two three so you can go one two three two two three two 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 so instead of a simple beat division where you have one and two and one and two you have one two three two two three let me use the metronome and i'm going to divide the beat into two and then i'm going to divide the beat into three so you can hear the difference do this exercise at home please so you can hear the difference between the beat divisions let's slow it down so if we were to divide this into a simple meter that's dividing the beat by two, it would go one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. All right. If we were to if we were to divide this beat into a compound meter, you would go one two three two two three one two three two one two three two three one. 
cool. Huh? Two, three, huh? So what you end up getting? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Now you see how we get six? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right? So now that we understand that principle, then we could say a compound time signature would be something like six, eight, or six, four, or six, two, or six, sixteen. These, these two, six, and two, two, and you will really see them. That's why I kind of put them further down. All right? So, now let's look at a compound triple. What do you think the top number would be? Use your expert deduction skills and tell me what you think the top number would be. The bottom number could be whether 8, 4, 2, or 16. But what do you think the top number would be? Type in the chat what you think the top number is. Remember, the beat is divided by 3. So how many counts would we end up getting? Let us see if you will get the correct answer. I'll give you two more seconds. Good? So a compound triple meter would look like, would have a top number of 9. Did you say 9? Did you say 9 at home? If you said 9, you are correct. If you said anything else, you are incorrect. So you see the principle? So we, we, we say 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 3, 9. So a quadruple would be what? 3 times 4, which is 12. Let me put that in bracket. Triple, 3, quadruple, 4. 2 times 3, 6. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 3, 12. Quad triple compound could be 9, 8, 9, 2, um, let me put 9, 4 first. 9, 4, 9, 2, or 9, 16. Then quadruple could be 12, 8, 9, 8, eh, gone back to, gone back to 9. 12, 4, 12, 2, or 12, 16. How do we count a triple compound meter, you'd say? All right, let me just use Blessed Assurance because Blessed Assurance is 9-8. The time signature for Blessed Assurance is 9-8. If we could pull up back the Blessed Assurance and have it on the screen, you'd realize. So it goes, Blessed are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Jesus is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4. Says, so when you're counting, you're actually counting 9. You're counting to 9. If you realize that's what you're doing you're counting one two three one one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine so you're counting nine quavers per bar essentially every time you're doing that you're counting the nine quavers per bar all right an example of quadruple i don't have an example of quadruple but let us say you wanted to do joyful, joyful. You could count joyful, joyful. Theoretically, you could count it in a quadruple meter because the song is in 4-4. Four, four. So you could say 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but it would be kind of weird, all right? So quadruple meters in, in the hymnal, you rarely see them. That's a point. Quadruple meters, you rarely see them. Well, compound quadruple. You, you most often find simple quadruple, all right? So how we put it together, we always say we use the beat division first, the kind of beat division, whether it is a simple beat division or a compound beat division. So we'll put this first, and then we'll put this next. So a song that is in 2-4 would be a simple duple meter song. That's how you'd call it. You'd call it a simple duple meter. A song that is in 3-4, like Praise to the Lord, or um, which other song is in 3? Many songs are in 3. I don't remember any offhand. Anytime you want to remember a song, you always forget. 
Any song that you see in the hymnal that is in 3 4 or 3 8 or 3 2, that song is a trip, a simple triple meter. A simple triple meter. And then the most common time signature, 4 4, is simple quadruple. You count that 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the most common. All right? Now, we're going to be looking at the, the three most popular. The three most popular time signatures. And we're going to have examples of those songs so that you can really understand this. So, we said the most popular is 4 4. Then, so this win, this is the prize. The next popular is 3 4. And then, the next popular is 6 8. If you look in the hymnal, most of the songs, most of the songs are in 4-4. Four, four. Then you'll find, a, a probably, probably if the hymnal have, how much songs the hymnal have again? 600 and add? 680, probably, I, I don't want to, you can't, quote, you can't quote me on this, but probably 300 of the songs are 4-4. Four, four. I didn't check, but probably 300 of the songs are 4-4. Four, four. Probably about 100 of them will be 3-4. And probably about 60 to 50 of them will be 6, 8. And then the rest of them would be um, between whether 2, 4, and what other time signature? You, you'd see 3, 8. What else you'd see? You'd see 2, 2. You'll see 6, 4, pretty common. So I'm circling the most common, the most commonly used time signature. So you'll see 2, 4, you'll see 2, 2, you'll see 3, 8, you'll see 4, 4, 6, 8. So you'll see time signatures like those. Aside from that, you'd have to look in other, in other literature, whether your piano pieces or your vocal pieces. You'll find other sheet music to see these other time signatures because they're not very common in, in, in the, the, the hymnal. Um, I would say they're not even very common in all of piano music because I've never seen a piano piece that is in... 416. So yeah, the, the, you don't really have to know all of these, but it's just for your knowledge, all right? Just for your basic knowledge. All right, so let's look at a song that is in 4-4, four, four, and now we get into dotted notes. We're going to see how dotted notes would operate um, in, within these different contexts, all right? We're going to see how dotted notes operate. So that's essentially it for beat divisions. Um, let me just do a quick recap. Simple, you divide the beat in two. One and two and. So, pa, ta, 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 and two and. One and two and. One and. That's simple double. Simple triple. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. Quadruple, simple quadruple. One and two and three and four and. One and two, three and four and compound duple will be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the one and the four are the beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. For compound triple, you'd count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2, 3, 2, 3. Or you could go 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3. So you're counting the beats and then the, the, the quavers in between. Quadruple, you count to 12. I'm not going to count it. You can count it yourself because you're a bright girl or boy. All right, so... We're going to take a break right now, and then after the break, we're going to take a look at the hymns that are in 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, And then that would solidify everything, and then we'll kind of go into dotted notes, because it provides, once you understand beat divisions, then you, you'll understand dotted notes pretty easily. And time signatures, they're all related. All right? So see you shortly. It was French journalist and philosopher Albert Camus who said, life is a journey, not a destination. 
How well are you enjoying the journey of your life? How fulfilled do you feel about your life? For me, I follow Jesus. Join us, your friends, the Adventist, for the I Follow Jesus Digital Evangelistic Series, October 3 to 17, Sundays to Fridays, 7.30 to 8.45 p.m., and on Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. I follow Jesus. How about you? The next person in line, your friend at school or your co-worker may have COVID-19 and not know because they have no symptoms. You, on the other hand, could be hospitalized for two months or more if you become infected. Is it worth it? Stay socially connected, but keep the physical distance. Stay six feet away and avoid a hospital stay. COVID-19 is not over. Protect yourself while protecting others. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. All right, good. So, as I said before, we're going to be looking at some different hymns. We're going to look at one more concept, and then look at rest, and then that's it. That's it for class today. So, by the time I'm done with this board. So we're going to pull up Joyful Joyful again. 
so that we can look at joyful joyful i like using the same songs so that um you guys can kind of have examples of of how to how to understand these things so if you sing joyful joyful let's sing it first before we even get to playing before we even get to reading it or seeing how it looks on people so we'll go one two three four joyful joyful we adore thee god of glory lord of love hearts unfold like flowers before thee hail thee as the sun above so you'll see very quickly we can pause there you'll see very quickly that it's in four it's in four if you count it you go one two three four one two three four so essentially the reason why they, why they put four is because if you sing it and you count it you'll count four so sometimes when you see you may see a time signature and, and think that the time signature came before the music it's like no the music came first and then because it's divided because it's divided properly or well into four then they call it four four all right so you it, you can easily sense time signatures you, you get a sense of them pretty easily you, you can just feel it you can know when a song is in three you can know when a song is in four but how do we really know when a song is in six eight or or nine eight or anything like that this is this is what we'll be looking at now so um joyful joyful that's that's in four four uh, i don't really think i have to play that most people know that most people know what four sounds like three let's let's use praise to the lord That whole song is in three, four. All right. So you hear the difference between the three and the four. Now six, eight, six, eight. There are a number of songs that are in six, eight in the hymnal. What I want you to do for part of your homework is you're going to try and find some of them. Or anytime you're going through the hymnal, pay attention to the time signature. See if it's in four, four, three, four, or six, eight. Those are the most common. Um, we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at. Burdens are lifted. Burdens are lifted is in 6 8. That is number 476. So if you have your hymnal there at home, you can find it. You can look at it. I don't have the music. But what I want for you to do is listen to it. All right? So it goes. Uh, let's go. In. Let's go a bit higher. So. So can you hear the six eight? Can you hear the six eight? Let's look at another one. Let's look at faith is the victory. That is one, two, three, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. good so look through the hymn now see if you can find different songs that are in the different time signatures and see if you can understand them all right so that is beat divisions let's look at dotted notes within the context of simple time all right let's just let's explain the concept first so this is how a dotted note works right let's go back to note names and values where we said this is a semi-brief this has a count of four 
and this is dependent on the time signature. Meaning, time signature of 2, if the time signature is 4, 4. So let's say, if time signature, TS or time signature is 4, 4, then this is IT for all those IT people out there. If then a semi -bear is 4, a minim is 2, a crotchet is 1. Now, let's see how a dotted note works now. If you see a semi brief and it's dotted, a dot means, the dot means add half, how am I writing half like that? Half the value of the original note. Original. A dot means, a dot literally means add half the value of the original. So if we say a dotted semi brief, let's, let's do a table here. Let's, original semi brief, four. Dotted semi brief, four plus the dot means half the value. What is half of four? Two. Four plus two is six. So a dotted semi brief would be six counts. A dotted minimum would be how much counts? Three. And a dotted quaver, sorry, a dotted crotchet would be what is one? What is half of one? Half. One and a half. All right? One and a half. Now, this is how it would work in the context of a simple type signature or most of the time simple simple yeah simple duple or triple or quadruple so an example let's look at joyful joyful now um, let's have it come up on the screen and let me show you how it would work i'm going to play it so you have let me play it very slowly so you can realize how it would work practical example now one and two and three and four and and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one and two and three so you hear the off look at the lord of love lord two three of love one two so what you should be doing or what you uh, a common principle is in four four time if you have a dotted note or if you have a lot of dotted notes in the piece count the quavers what does that mean it's, you're not counting one two three four you're counting one and two and three and four and so you're counting the quavers in between so that what, by the time you get to the dotted note, you get Lord 2, 3, off love. So it's easy to understand. Because essentially what you're saying, what is taking place is that in the Lord, there are three quavers. A quaver would be half of a crotchet there. So 1, 2, 3, off love. What it really is, is one and a half of the beat, you know. But nobody not going to really count what is one, what is... What is half a beat? How do I count half a beat? Lord of Lord. Where would the half a beat come? So to get it easily, you just count three quavers. I know. So this is where um, compound time signatures will come in now. Because in 6 8, in 6 8, the beat is already. So let me take out this now. So you understand that it notes. It's, um, the dot means ha add half the value of the original. Good? Let's leave that there. Let's take this off. So, if, let us keep our if there now. Let us keep our if. If our time signature is, let's put 9, 8. No matter. 8 is the bottom number, which means a quaver. 8 is the bottom number, which means a quaver, this is a quaver, represents one beat. 
So if a quaver now represents one beat, let's do our table now. A quaver now represents one beat. How much would a crotchet represent? This is a half note. This is a quarter note. Well, it's an eighth note, sorry. This is a quarter note. If a quaver represents one beat, a crotchet represents two beats. So you see how everything changed? A minimum would represent four now, and a semi brief would represent eight. Yeah? Seen that? Seen that? So for nine, eight, we're going to look at blessed assurance now. We're going to look back at the same hint, blessed assurance, and show you how dotted notes work. All right? So, a dotted, a dotted quaver would now worth one and a half. A dotted crotchet would worth two plus half of one. Half of two is one. So two plus one is three. This would be worth, and you can, you can figure out the rest, six. And this would be worth half of eight is four. Eight plus four is 12. So you see how they work now? Yeah? See that? semi brief by itself eight that's if the time signature is nine eight meaning by itself four crotchet two quaver because this now represents your one beat one you have a dotted quaver one and a half dotted crotchet three now let us see if we can identify something in blessed assurance let's look back at blessed assurance and all the songs that are written in whether 9, 8, or 6, 8, they all have dotted crotchets. So when you're writing in 9, 8, or 6, 8, or 12, 8, or 3, 8, you'll more often see dotted crotchets. You'd more often see dotted crotchets and dotted minims because they would represent one beat. A dotted crotchet would literally be one beat in, in 6, 8, or 9, 8. So look at it now. One, two, three. One, two, three. You see that? You're counting three quavers, but you're seeing one dotted crotchet. So you see how the dotted notes work now? It is three quavers, you know. Three quavers are in that same space. But, you know, that you, I mean, you could, there's another way to write it. And you could put a tie. You could put a tie. What you call a tie. That thing that you see there at mine. That's a tie. That little um, loop over there. But if you don't want to write it like that. Then you just put a dotted crotchet. And that literally means four for three beats. So. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, off glory, diva. So. Yes, yeah, so so essentially that is the principle. You'll be, seeing, you'll be seeing dotted notes more often in compound time signatures. All right, so that's, that's one thing that you can make note of. All right, so yes, yeah, so essentially that's it. Um, yeah, you might, it, it may be a little bit tricky, but if you don't understand anything, just go walk over the videos watch them and what you should really do so that this concept can be concretized in your mind is find different time signatures and see this is this is see how the time signatures apply to how you sing them and count so if you see a time signature of six eight you say okay that is is a two beat and it's divided in three it's a lot of much so it's a two beat you divide it in three so you sing it and camped along the hills of life. He won. So just one, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. So um, let's talk about conducting now. So praise leaders, this one applies for you. Sometimes I see people conducting six, eight, and three. It's not wrong. Because technically, you could see six, eight as, you could divide six, eight. 
in 3. You could divide it as 3 sets of 2 quavers. So you could go. But the proper way to divide 6, 8 is 2 sets of 3 quavers. One, two. So it's not one, two, three, four. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Count the long the one, two, three, four, five. You Christian. So, so you'd be two. One, two. If you're conducting it, one, two, one, two. If you're beating nine, eight, you're beating three because it's a triple meter. It's a triple compound. So you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seeking the law, the, the, uh, kindly entry, it, 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 words of the, one, two, three, at the, 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 Three, four. It's the same, the same principle. It's just that the beats are divided in three instead of two. All right. So that is beat divisions, dotted notes. These are the simple principles. As I said before, to understand them, just go through the hymn now. Look, see if you can find songs that you that you sing often. See what time signature they're in. Sing them. And then be counting and say, mm. so, oh, okay, that's, that's how that works. That's how that applies. All right, that's the application of this. Good. So, that's that for that. Now, let's take a look at rests. And then, we will be out of here. Um, let's leave that there. Rest. Now, what is a rest? What is a rest? A rest is a symbol that denotes a period of silence. Music is made up of sound. Some people would call it noise. Music is not noise. Music and noise are two different things. Music is made up of sound or notes and then silence. And silences are just as important as the sound. Silences indicate suspense. Silences indicate thought. Silences indicate just breaks. It's like, okay, I want a break. Silence. All right? So composers, when you're, when you're writing a piece and you indicate silence here, it's for a reason. So when you want to notate silence, when you want to give this effect, you use a rest in music. All right? So rests are very simple. They kind of apply to... Um, note names and values so we'll we'll look at them in that context um let's do i'm gonna need more space than this so let's do it let's do it over here right so um Let's say note and rest. The reason why, the reason why I do not want to give these a value is because as you know from time signatures, the, the values can change. The values are subject to change based on the bottom number. All right. 
So we're just going to associate them with their notes. Good. So you see a semi brief, a semi brief rest. Is written on the. It's how these do again. I should I revise these? You know. All right. Let me go through. I remember as time goes along. Ah, uh, let's let's start from the. Let's start from the semi quaver. And work our way up. There's a there's a way to do. There's, a, there's like a trick with this. You know. All right. So. Majority. This is bam, 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 bam. Wow, that's hard to see. Too much lines. All right, I don't need any more lines for that. I'll just draw them. So. A semi quaver rest would look like this. Bam bam. Yeah, kind of seven with a little. You see, that one is that. So it doesn't have an extra tail. A crotchet rest would look something like this. Eh, eh, bam. So it's like a. You do a Z and then a C. I can't explain it. That's just how it looks. All right, and then a minimum rest would be on the third line. I need to check this, you know. I need to check this because I'm not sure. I'm gonna verify. So a minimum rest would be on the third line facing up, and then a semi reverse would be on the fourth line facing down. So when you see these, there are periods of silence. You hold them for the same amount of value as you'd hold that. So the same reverse, you'd hold it for the same amount of value. I don't want to say you'll hold this for four counts because as we know from time signatures, it varies. So you can't say four and two and one. You hold it for the amount, the same amount of time that you'd hold a crotchet for within the given context of the time signature. All right. So. Let's say, for example, a piece is in four, four, and then you see this. This is this is a rhythmic exercise that you can do. That's that's a bar. This is a bar. Rest. Rest. And we say, let us clap this rhythm. You're not going to clap the rest. You'd go one, two, one, two, three, four. Clap, 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 silence, silence, clap, silence, clap. So this would sound like pa, 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 pa. Let me use a metronome. So you can hear the beats. One, whoa. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let's go one more time. One, two, three, four. Clap, 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 rest, rest, clap, rest, clap. So ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta. Let's change it. Let's put a this is a minimum rest. This is a mini rest, all right? So you go silence, clap, clap, silence, clap, clap, 
Silence. Let's go again. Two, three, four. Do clap. Two. Clap. 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 Rest. Good. So that's that's how rest work essentially. If it's if it's a eighth note, then you'd hold it for the amount of counts that you that you would be silent for an eighth note. All right. So um, it's very simple. It's just for you to be able to recognize them when you see them. So if you have never seen these before, take them off. If even if you have seen them before, still take this off because this table is useful for you to to help associate um, the given notes with their rests. So this is a semi-quaver rest, semi-quaver rest, quaver rest, crotchet rest, minim rest, and whole note rest, or semi wave rest. All right, so that is it for rest. That is how rest work in music and that brings us to the end of our class for today all right so i hope that you understood beat divisions dotted note it was a it was kind of a lot of it's kind of a lot of math when you get into certain elements of music you realize that it's it's a whole lot of math and it's a lot of counting and you know but the more you do it is the more you'll get better at it the more you'll get familiar with it and the easier it will be all right, so I encourage you guys to keep practicing, keep watching. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what else to say. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, I, I don't understand. It's, it's, that's one of the things that I understand music, but I don't understand that. All right, so share with your friends, subscribe, um, like the video if you like the video. And our faith and learning, our faith and learning application for today today we just spoke about rests right and the lord gives us a day of rest and just as so in music rests are important for a time of reflection you know sometimes you just need a break in music it's not all the time you need to be playing music you know sometimes you need a rest in music just as so you need rest in music you need rest in life. And God gave us this day of rest, the Sabbath. So that at the end of the week, at the end of the hectic week, we can just rest. Relax, spend some time with him. Spend some time in his courts. Fellowship with his people. And get prepared to face the challenges of the next week. And so just as our rest in music are important, rest in life are important. So take your rest well. Don't just rush through them. Every day is not a... And sometimes you may just need a rest in the middle of the week. Take your rest. All right? Um, so that's it for the end of... That's it for today's program. We've come to the end of today's program. We will close with a word of prayer. Dear kind, gracious Father, we thank you so much for life. We thank you for allowing us this privilege to bring this word to your people across across barriers across countries um, worldwide we ask that you will continue to build us we ask that you will continue to bless all the people who are watching this we ask that you will continue lord to keep us safe we thank you for everything that you have done for us and that you continue to do we thank you god for just being god and for being good we love you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We all like to talk. Well, some of us. Want something good to talk about? Like what? Let's talk about him. Oh, no, not him. Let's talk about Jesus. Join the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica from October 3 to 17, 2020 for the online Let's Talk About Him evangelistic series under the theme, I Follow Jesus. Visit the website at www.ifollowjesus.org for free online Bible studies and other resources. Mark the date on your calendars, share with a friend, and let's talk about him.
the next person in line. Your friend at school or your co-worker may have COVID-19 and not know because they have no symptoms. You, on the other hand, could be hospitalized for two months or more if you become infected. Is it worth it? Stay socially connected, but keep the physical distance. Stay six feet away and avoid a hospital stay. COVID-19 is not over. Protect yourself while protecting others. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Thank mm -hmm. you.